What is up guys? So if you're a beginner, I can summarize this video in two words. Do it. The Odin Project's JavaScript course has completely evolved my understanding of JavaScript over the last three months. I feel like I'm at a level now where I can actually build real world projects and I understand what I'm doing and why I'm doing it for the most part at least. And minus one project that we worked on. We'll jump into that later though. Now, before we go any further and look at the projects, I highly recommend you complete the foundations course before starting the JavaScript course. Especially if you're a complete beginner who's never coded a line of code in their life. Like, start with the foundations and then move to the JavaScript course. There are some basics covered in that course that you need to be comfortable with to effectively progress through the JavaScript course, all right? And also, I've made a video going over the foundations course from a beginner's perspective. You guys can check that out. I'll have that in the link below. And so now, let's get into it. My take as a beginner on the Odin Project's the JavaScript course. The course starts off with a focus on objects and object-oriented programming. You learn about all the cool things that you can do with those objects and how to access, use, change, and create either more properties and values or new objects altogether entirely, and then ultimately build a project around those. So now let's take a look at those projects that we work on in the first part. So here we have my library, and as you can see, we are reading for racks, right? We're reading for racks. And here we have the objects for the books that we already completed. Each book is an object, all right? And here, and inside that, there are properties. We have title here, author, and pages, okay? And the value you see is what's in, what's displayed. We're displaying the value of that object, just the value. And if we wanna make a new one, we simply come here to this plus mark, we click on title, we'll type in coders at work. I have a list of books I need to read and that's that's one of them. I don't know the name of the author, we'll just go with um, cool guy and then pages 420. And we'll mark it as not read. Now once we hit submit, boom, there we have it. Coders at work, author, cool guy, pages not read. So what we did, we created an object when we hit this plus, and then stored the object into an array. And then I believe this was the first time I used Firebase to save the, um, to actually save the object into like a, a backend as a service to, to make sure it stays there forever and you know, never goes away. You can also do it with local storage. But yeah, that's the first like major object oriented program that you make in the JavaScript course, right? And it really gets you feeling comfortable with objects. You kind of understand how to create them and how to use the properties and the values within them and you know and, and display that data. And here we have the next project, my tic-tac-toe game. So here it pops up with the module, we'll put player one name, will be me, player two name, can be you guys. Alright, once we have that in, we click play. And here you see the board. It says whose turn it is down here. It's Michael's turn. And you can restart the game here. X, it's you guys' turn. O, X, O, X, and Michael has a win. What an absolute war, a battle, a barn burner. This project was tricky for me. When it comes to using grids, or making grids with arrays, empty arrays and filling them in, it's just, I still struggle with that just a little bit. And it's a project that we do later on down the road that like, I really struggled with it because it focused more on that, the empty arrays and filling the arrays with data and like, you know, making that data match. I don't know. I do a horrible job of explaining it and that's probably why I'm so absolutely terrible at it, but that's probably by far my biggest weakness. But once I figured it out with a lot of Googling and I had to watch some tutorials and kind of grind and grit through it, I was able to get it done. I was able to learn a lot too and feel a little more comfortable with everything. All right, and next we have our restaurant page. Now, quick disclaimer, I lost everything I had saved on my um, previous hard drive on Linux and did not upload my final version of this to GitHub. So this was the version I was able to pull from GitHub and it's missing a lot of the final tweaks that I did to really make the page look good. Like the font sizes were a little different. Uh, this check our menu button here was bigger and it was the same color as the home up here and then had like a little coffee cup in it. 
and then when we clicked on the menu it had a black transparent background so I'll probably go through and add all that back and polish up the project but for the sake of the video I'm gonna show you guys what I have this part was also had a black transparent background sucks I lost that it, they were small finishing touches but you know all in all they add to the value of the project Still though, this was a good one. This worked on modularized code, like everything was broken up into a different module. And here you're just displaying the module when you click. Like the home component here is a module, or the, the home page here is a module. Uh, the menu page here is a separate module that we're to toggling over to. And then lastly, we have the about module. And this one's really not too complicated. It's a lot of fun. You get to show off a lot of personality. And I wish I had, I wish I had my, um, my final project for you guys, but this will suffice for now, for sure. So for the last object oriented project, you guys would be surprised how many takes that took to get right. <laughs> like for real. Uh, but we have a to-do list. Now I went ahead and made a portfolio for myself and that's one of the projects I put on my portfolio. So here we have my portfolio. We click on the learn more, look at that. Oof, oof, oof. And then we have our to-do list right here. So here it is, the to-do list. Now it saves in local storage. This was my first local storage project. And um, it's pretty straightforward. Every time you click this plus here, you're gonna make a new to-do, right? And all of this is saving as an object. So you're creating an object every time you do this, just like our uh, library, right? So we can call this one new to-do. And then we can set the due date for, sorry, March uh, 24th. And description will be, what's, what's a cool description for us? Uh, new to do <laughs> description. Yeah, that's a good one, right? And now I have a priority here. So we can set the priority to urgent or normal. And I'll go over what that does in a second. But for this one, I will set it to urgent. And then we can add a checklist here. What do we need? We need some beer. We need some uh, some peace, um, some things, right? And you can scroll down as they, oh, I didn't add it. And we can scroll down as they add. Once you have everything added to your to-do list, you can go ahead and click create. And there we have the new project pushed in right here. Now, as you notice, it's font is red. That's because we selected urgent. Now, all we're really doing is sorting the objects out. So over here, we're sorting them by both urgency first. So if it's labeled urgent, it's on top. And then we do another sort by date. So as you see here, uh, February 1st comes before March 24th. And then, so these are the urgent ones. And afterwards, we have February 25th. And then, fe uh, yeah, February 28th. And then you can also go back in and click on the project. And when you click on it, you see everything in the to-do. You can put a longer description in here so you kind of know what's going on. You can make longer pinning tasks. And as you accomplish your task, you can check them off. If you no longer want them there, you can just delete it all together. And if you want to add a new one here, you can just go ahead and add it from this page and the new task is there. All right. And then also from home, we can delete. So I'll delete the new task we just made. Click here, boom, it's gone. Because it's saved in local storage on refresh, it stays. We just refresh the page and it stayed, boom. So this one, it was complicated and easy at the same time. I feel like, I feel like that's a lot of projects, honestly. But um, I had a lot of fun making this one. My color scheme's not the best. It's pretty atrocious if you ask me. I should've went with like a flat blue and not the gradient, but I was feeling myself. You know how that goes. When you're feeling yourself, you're just in a zone. Uh, again, I got very comfortable with objects and understanding how to do all types of things with them. Like you just, you, to make a to-do list, you end up doing a lot. And, um, when you incorporate local storage or a Firebase or a real backend, I, I haven't, I haven't dealt with a real backend yet, so I can't speak on that. But as, as far as Firebase or local storage goes, it adds another layer of depth and difficulty. But, um, you learn a lot more when you do that, I feel, than just doing it without saving any of the data. And then the course kind of slows down. You go from building, building, building to learning about the broader picture or what it calls real world JavaScript. The course starts to cover things like bundling your code and compiling it, which, you know, I understand how to do and kind of why, but I'm not the best webpack like user or understander yet. Mm, but we'll keep going. <laughs> uh, it covers linting 
which is pretty much just formatting your code to a widely accepted set of standards. And what that really means is you download an extension called uh, ESLint to your code editor, and you select one of the standard libraries like Airbnb or like the JavaScript standard, and then it will tell you, it will ping a bunch of alerts all over your code of what you need to do to format it. <laughs> so I read through the whole manual for both, like I think it was like the plain JavaScript and then the uh, Airbnb one, but I mean, that's good if you wanna know why you're doing it, how you're doing it. But ESLint, got, ESLint has you covered, for sure, for sure. And then we move on to the next topic at hand, APIs. Now this was probably my favorite part of the whole course so far. APIs are crazy. APIs are awesome. Think of an API like a library, like a giant library of information that you can pull whatever you want from and display it however you choose to for your project. And there is an API for almost everything. Let's say we're working with an anime API. When we do our API call, we get access to the names of all the anime, release dates, a picture, and whatever else information they've stored pertaining to that specific title that you looked up. And then when you receive the call, you get all that information in like a nice little package that you can pick apart and put wherever you want. And like, oh, it's so nice. It's just so nice. The project for this portion was a weather app. And now the weather app is another project on my portfolio. So let's go take a look at that real fast. So here we are back on the world's greatest portfolio. We're dropping on down to my projects and we will click on the weather app. Now for the weather app, it's like I said earlier, we're, we're making a call out to the weather API. We're grabbing the data about this city that it has stored. It has the name of the city, the state, the temperature, the feels like, the low, the high, the winds. It has so much information. I didn't even pull it all. There was so much available, but I've only decided to pull what you guys see here on my display. So I reached that, even a little picture of the cloud here, they had that stored. So we reached out, we pulled that in, boom. And then with the API key, you can swap what it's searching for. So right now we have Houston, we can type in Dallas. Then we have Dallas's weather, 69, scattered clouds, feels like 59. Um, we can go global, let's go to like, um, let's go to Leeds, let's look at Leeds real fast. Boom, there you go, 41 degrees, broken clouds, it feels like 37, cold AF over there. One more, one more, one more, Atlanta. Boom, 64, overcast. So it didn't matter what we put in, as soon as we search for the city that we input, the city name, we're making an API call to our weather API, grabbing all that data, we're grabbing all the data for that city and pulling it into our project. And then once we have it there, we go in and take out specific items from the API call, from that city call that we made, and we display them however we want. And uh, there's just so many, so many things you can do with APIs, man. This is this is my favorite thing I've learned so far. And I really wanna build my own project based around an API that like I'm really invested in. Um, but that's gonna come a little later. Hey guys, future Michael here. So the video ran just a little bit longer than I anticipated. And by a little bit, I mean a lot. So I'm gonna go ahead and break this one up into two parts. Uh, so far, we're about halfway through the Odin Project's JavaScript course. And already around this time, I started feeling really confident in my skills. I felt like I could build a project based around an API and like, it'd be a good project, you know? <laughs> It, it took a while to get that kind of confidence, but around here, with everything we've done so far, this is when I started feeling really comfortable in my skills and actually started to believe in myself. Now, next up, the course moves on to React, and then we start the React development. And if you guys don't know, React is one of the best libraries that JavaScript has to offer. It's booming in the fields, and it's a lot of fun to use. So we'll take a look at the React projects, and then go onward into the last few projects of the course, and then I'll give my final thoughts. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, do like and subscribe, so you guys know when that part two drops, so you can get my full perspective of the Odin Project's JavaScript course as a beginner. And it goes a long way in motivating me and keeping me going. But anyway, guys, I appreciate you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.